Good morning, Jamestown. I wanted to share a story with you from a few years ago when I took a group of students to Atlanta, Georgia. Down in Atlanta, Georgia, we had the opportunity to deliver uh, sack lunches to those that live underneath of the bridges, live in tent communities, and under the overpasses around the city. And so armed with our sack lunches that we had made that morning as a group, we began to walk throughout the city and meet people where they were and where they are and hand out the lunches. And the main goal of the entire morning was to simply provide food. That was all we were asked to do. And as we were crossing the off-ramp of one of the major thoroughfares through the city of Atlanta, we ran into a gentleman and he looked at us and he said, no, thank you. I don't want any food. The only thing that I want is for you to pray for me. And so right there in the middle of the city, in one of the busiest parts, we stopped and we prayed with him in the heat of the day. And then we continued walking. And as we were walking and crossing the bridge, one of the adults who was gathered with us that week turned to me and she said, I don't understand. Why would he only ask for prayer? So I, I told her that that would be a great question for us to talk about in our small group that night. So as we gathered in the gym and pulled out our air mattresses and sat down and began to talk as a group and reflect on the day, she asked her question. And one of the things that came out of our discussion of why would he only ask for prayer is, huh, it takes an immense amount of faith to believe that prayer works. To believe that the only thing that you need, the only thing that you need as a provision for yourself is to have someone pray for you when you are hungry or thirsty or alone, as we sometimes have felt during this isolation of COVID-19 in the midst of the pandemic. And that story in that moment and watching my students wrestle and struggle with the impact of prayer, which most of the time has no physical sign that in that moment that something is being done. Today is the National Day of Prayer. And last year, Phyllis and her crew put together this amazing prayer opportunity and experience for us at the church. And I know that their hearts are breaking today, that we cannot be gathered together and provide those opportunities for you once again. But the beautiful thing about prayer is that you can pray anywhere where you are. And prayer, I think, is one of the largest signs, outward signs, of our faith. It is a huge sign of our faith, and prayer makes a difference. Listen to this strange passage from Exodus chapter 17. Moses said to Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Alamec. Tomorrow and I will be to the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. And he went to the top of the hill. And whenever Moses held up the staff, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek prevailed. Moses' hands got tired, so they took the stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And it helped hold up his hands, Aaron and her on either side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Amalek's people were taken, overtaken with the sword. The story points out a lot about prayer in that Moses, at the very beginning of the battle, could he knew, he knew that this battle could not be won without prayer. Secondly, the story shows that prayer made a practical difference in the battle and in the lives of those that were fighting. As Moses was able to hold up his hands to God in prayer, the battle turned to Joshua. And when he grew weary and his hands dropped, the battle turned to the Amalekites. And third, the story teaches us that Moses, through Aaron and her, needed the support of the people around him. Prayer is not something that we do in isolation. It is a sign of our faith. It is something that each and every one of us needs. So on this National Day of Prayer, I encourage you to have faith. Believe that prayer can make a difference for you in the lives of our community and in the lives of, lives of our nation and in our world as we continue to navigate the pandemic that we are living in the midst of and as we continue to navigate what opening up looks like. Today, if no other day of the year, 
on this National Day of Prayer, let us join our voices and our postures and our hearts in an attitude of prayer to God.